All right, so this is how to do the, um, the envelope assignment. Um, having to do it here on my, wet, on my Chromebook because the computer crashed. Um, I didn't record it, and now I'm not near my computer. So we're just going to go ahead and do it on here. If you do, if you follow these instructions um, for PhotoP and Photoshop, it should work just the same. Um, so I'm just going to do it here in PhotoP for you. Or Photo P. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new document. So file, new. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to make it a 8.5 by 11 uh, document. So in PhotoP, if we go to print, we can find 8.5 by 11 here under letters. It's a regular sheet of paper. Um, but we're going to switch the settings here. We don't want to do, um, we want to do it hamburger style rather than hot dogs. We're going to switch and put the 11 on top and 8.5 on the bottom. So let's do this flip button here. And then we'll go ahead and hit create. All right, so that just kind of gives us a, a document to work with here. And now we're going to go ahead and create um, the basic shape of our envelope here. So I'll go ahead and hit the new layer button, which looks like a piece of paper down here. And then on this new layer, we'll go ahead and grab our rectangle select tool, our rectangle marquee tool here. And we'll just draw out the basic shape of our envelope. So something like that. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and start filling this in and creating some texture. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is kind of move this someplace. I'm not right there. There we go. Um, so first thing we need to do is uh, we want to render some clouds in here, but in PhotoP, it doesn't like having this uh, transparent background on this layer that we just created. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to head, go down here. We're going to change our colors, make sure they're black and white here. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our paint bucket tool. All right. And flip it around. We want our white here on the top. All right. So see right here. So we're going to put white on top and we're just going to fill in this box with white. I just clicked once right there, and as you can see, now this is filled with white. Now I can go up to um, Filter, and we can go down to Render, so Filter, Render, and Clouds. All right, and that'll give us just some uh, basic black and white texture here to start working with. Um, now we're going to go and do another little effect to it, so we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Stylize, and we're going to choose the mouse. Right, so the clouds just kind of give it a little bit of variation in the color. This emboss starts to give it some texture that we like. Um, and we can adjust the height if we want a little bit more texture, right? Or we can lower it if we want a little bit less. It's really there, just kind of looking like a cardstock now that you'd create an envelope out of. I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. Um, now the next thing we want to do is we want to, if we look at an envelope, there's usually kind of a, a line down the middle where the two pieces of paper were glued together. So we want to go ahead and create that here. We're going to go ahead and click on a rectangle select tool again. And we're just going to draw a selection around about half of our rectangle here. And then we're going to go ahead and go up to layer. And we're going to go down to new. We're going to say layer via copy. So layer, new, layer via copy. And that'll take what we just had selected there and create a new layer with it. All right. Now, again, we don't really see the line down here in the middle, so what we're going to do is we're going to go here to um, Edit, and we're going to go down to Transform, and we're going to say Flip Horizontally. And now that kind of changed the texture, so it's going the other way here. And we can start to see kind of a little separation here in the middle. Now, it's got kind of this weird um, line here, this um, anti-aliasing line or whatever, so we're just going to select that because we don't really like that. Um, see on this Chromebook, do I have a plus sign? Where's my plus? All right, zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right. So you can kind of see that they're kind of a weird line. So I'm just going to select it and then hit the backspace key, and that'll get rid of that for me. All right. And I can go up here and go to uh, select and deselect there. And now we kind of got this little bit of a uh, different textures here from the left to the right. So I want to kind of make this separation a little bit more noticeable. So I'm going to go over here to my layer styles and I'm going to go ahead and add a drop shower shadow so it's the EFF button or the FX button in Photoshop add a little drop shadow and I gotta make sure it's going the right way right now it's going off to the left so it's not really helping me so I need to move the angle over so it's going the other direction and I want it to be real subtle so I'm just going to take the distance and bring it way down to just a couple pixels 
and the size down to a couple pixels here. All right, and then I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. It's just kind of giving just a nice, just a little bit of a line there, just barely noticeable. We can even lower the opacity a little bit if we wanted to. All right, because this is just where the two pieces of paper get glued together. All right, we'll hit OK. Now we want to go ahead and start working on our top flap here. So to create the top flap, I'm going to actually use the pen tool. Right? We kind of learned about that last assignment uh, before the break. So I'm going to go to the pen tool, but I'm going to switch and make sure I'm on path for this, all right? Because I want to turn it into a selection. So I'm going to choose path, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, we're going to create this kind of flap shape here. So it kind of comes down, curves over, goes across, and then curves back up, right? That's kind of the shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and start just one click here at the top left. And then down here inside the envelope, I'm going to click and drag to the right. So that kind of gives it that little bit of a little bit of a curve there. Pretty nice. And I'm going to go over to this other side about the same distance away. And I'm going to click and drag to the right. I didn't get it really straight, but that's all right. So click and drag to the right. And then I, to tell it that, OK, I want it to curve as you go back up to this next spot. And I'll just click once on the next spot. Maybe. There we go. All right, a little bit, a little bit more out here. There you go. I like that a little bit better. All right, and then to close this, I'm going to go back to the beginning. So I'll click back on that first dot, and there we go. We got kind of this flap shape here. Now, if I copy the layer I'm on right now, I'm only going to get that half that we just created. I want the whole thing, right? I want this flap to kind of cover the whole thing. So we're going to go here and click on the first layer for that, and then we're going to go ahead and up here at the top, we're going to click on Make selection all right and it comes up with a, this question just go ahead and hit okay all right so now that we got this selection made and we're on our full size envelope layer right here we're going to go up to um, layer and say new layer via copy all right now I, I know once i did that you don't really see any difference right but it did create a new layer which is that flap on it so if i move it to the top you'll start to see it here Boom, move it to the top layer, and then if I give it that drop shadow, then it'll really be noticeable. All right? So, drop shadow. All right, I can even increase the distance a little bit on this one. All right, and now we're really starting to see that flap there at the top. Okay. All right, so now we got our basic uh, shape of our envelope here basic layout. And so I'm going to go ahead and start to get a little bit organized here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these all in a folder. And I call that folder envelope. So we're going to click on the folder button down here. It's next to the new layer button. It looks like a folder, right? And we're going to go ahead and call this um, envelope. And I'm going to go ahead and stick all three pieces in here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all three of those. So it highlights them all. And I'm going to click and drag them up into the envelope. And we'll give them a name. We'll call this one uh, envelope. Uh, we call it, oops. Rename this one and call it left side. And we'll rename this off one here and call it flap. All right. So they're all named and they're all inside this envelope so that. The way I can tell that is if I hit this little carrot here, they all collapse inside of it. And if I turn off the eyeball, the envelope disappears, all right? So this kind of is useful to have it in, in, inside of this folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and create another new folder now for our class. We're going to create a little class to keep this envelope closed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new folder button. Oops. And I accidentally created it inside of the envelope there, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, there. So I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the envelope here, or the folder, the top folder here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the new folder button, and that'll put it up on top of that. And I'll go ahead and call it class. All right. And then inside of class, I want to go ahead and create a new layer, and we're going to call this layer outer class. There we go. All right, and so to create this class, we're going to go ahead and grab our Eclipse Select tool. 
And we're going to go ahead and create a circle here at the top, holding down the uh, you hold down the shift key, it'll keep it as a perfect circle. All right, and then once I got it created, I can kind of move it where I want it to be here. All right, and then we'll go ahead and choose a color for this clasp. Um, so maybe like a, a nice red color here. All right, and then we'll just go up to Edit and choose Fill and fill it with that color, with the foreground color. Hit OK. All right, now don't get rid of your selection here because we want to go ahead and we're going to cut a little hole out of the middle here. And rather than trying to like draw a new circle there, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our selection here. We're going to go up to Select, and we're going to go down to Modify. So select Modify and choose Contract. All right, and that'll let us take this selection and just make it smaller. And so this is going to, the number here is going to vary depending on the size of your document and the size of your circle. Um, but for me, I found somewhere around 40, I think, works okay. Nope, that's not enough. So do even more. So again, I'll control Z, undo that. So it may take you a few times to figure out what works just right for you here. Uh, let's try 50 pixels. Um, let's do even more. So I'm just going to, here, just experiment with a few different numbers until I find one that I like. Apparently i got a pretty big circle here. There we go. So 60, that kind of works for me. Um, now I want to go ahead and delete this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the delete key or the backspace key on my keyboard. And that'll cut a nice hole right out of the middle there. Now I'm still not done with this yet. Now I want to go ahead and create the little ring that holds this clasp down. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here to the new layer button. And I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, inner clasp. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick a color for it here. So a nice kind of yellow golden color. Up in there somewhere. All right. And I'm going to go up to edit, which is where we did the fill. But this time I'm going to do stroke. So edit stroke. And I'm probably going to do, I want the position to be centered. And we'll do the size, I don't know, I'm going to try 18 pixels, see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. All right, so again, that number you may have to experiment a little bit with to get the right size here. And now I'm done with that selection. So now you can go select, deselect, and we can kind of see what our ring's starting to look like. Now we want to make it look a little bit more realistic, so I'm going to go ahead and give this outer clasp a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the effects buttons and click on drop shadow. And we'll just give it kind of the same drop shadow we gave the flap there is fine. Maybe. Let me just adjust it a little bit. All right. Hit OK. And then on the inner ring, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and give it the drop shadow. But on this one, I'm also going to give it a bevel and emboss. The bevel and emboss here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. We'll go ahead and make it look a little bit more ring-like. So I'm going to go to I'm going to adjust some of these settings here. A little bit more depth. Or, yeah, a little bit more size. There we go. And maybe soften it a little bit. So again, so there we go. Now it's starting to look kind of more like a little clasp there. And if you wanted to modify it even more, you can even come down here and adjust some of the colors. Um, just kind of adjust the highlight color there, or maybe even the, the uh, dark tones here. Just kind of make it a little bit more like a brass ring. All right. So now we got one ring, all right, and now we want to go ahead and copy that and move that down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this class folder. The nice thing about having this all in one folder is I can go ahead and just click on this folder and drag it down to the new layer button. And what it'll do is it makes a copy of that, all right? And now I can go ahead and go into this here and hold down my shift key and select both layers and then switch to the move tool. I can go ahead and move this second clasp down. So now we got both clasps here for our envelope. All right. And now we want to go ahead and start creating the strings. So the strings, we're going to create them above the envelope, but below the clasp. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the envelope layer, and I'm going to click on the new folder button. All right, to put a new folder right there between the envelope and the clasp. And we're going to go ahead and call it strings. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer inside of that. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to use the pen tool again. Now you can do this in both Photoshop and PhotoP. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just switch it from a path to a shape. All right. And then on the fill, 
we're going to go ahead and turn the fill off. And then on the stroke, we'll go ahead and give that a color here. And we'll go ahead and make that like a brown color, all right? So dark brown somewhere in there, all right? Kind of a string color. All right, now with our pen tool, we'll just click on the bottom left here inside of our clasp. Then click on the top left. And then I'll click down here on the bottom right. And that kind of gives us the shape of our string. And I'm not really seeing our string right here. So if I zoom in, I can barely see it. So I'm going to just increase the size a little bit. I can go up here to the drop down and crank up the size a little bit until I kind of get it where I want it. Uh, right in there somewhere is probably pretty good. All right. If I click on the background there, I can really see it a lot better. All right, so that's the first half of our string. Now we're going to go ahead and add the second half. So I'm going to click another layer. So I'm going to click the new layer button here. And I'm still going to use my pen tool. And I'm just going to go, this time I'm going to go from the bottom left to the top right. And then down to the bottom right. And I'm going to click out here onto the envelope and leave a little kind of loop here. Like it was tied around. There's a little bit of extra string coming down. All right. Click off it and see what it looks like there. All right, so that's kind of the design I want. Now we're going to give it a little bit more shape and form here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on my layer and we'll go ahead and give it some effects here. So we're going to give it a drop shadow and we want it to be a little bit heavier drop shadow than maybe what we've had on some of the other ones. Um, yeah, maybe like that. All right. And we'll also give it a little bevel and emboss too. We'll just keep the same bevel and emboss that we had before. Yeah, that should be okay. All right, and we'll do the same thing on layer one. Give it the bevel and emboss, and then also give it the little drop shadow. All right, and we'll hit okay. Now it looks like we got two strings there tying this thing closed, all right? And they kind of crisscross there in the middle. Perfect. All right, so now we're done with the strings folder, so we can close that one up. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and mark this uh, top secret. Oh, and I just realized we forgot to change the color of our envelope. I totally skipped this step. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back here and we're going to color our envelope. So we're going to go to the envelope folder, the envelope layer here inside of our folder. And we're going to go to um, image adjustments and we're going to say hue and saturation. All right. And for this hue and saturation, we're going to go ahead and click Colorize. So that will go ahead and allow us to change the color here. And we'll increase the saturation a little bit. And then we can adjust the hue a little bit to get the color that we want. So maybe something here in vanilla. I mean in a tan or yellow. And again, increase, decrease the saturation a little bit. Lightness, maybe something like that. All right. Um, and I'm going to remember these numbers, so 40, so let's just do, to make it easy to remember, I'm going to go 40, 20, and 10, all right? All right, I'm going to hit OK, and because I screwed up, originally if we'd copied this, uh, if I'd done it in the right order, we would have copied this, and then it would have just applied to everything else. So now we're going to have to just recolor all these envelopes. So I'm going to go up here, same thing, select the next layer, go Image, Adjustment, Hue and Saturation, click Colorize, and type in those numbers I had, 40, uh, 20, and 10. All right, there we go. Now it's looking the same. And we'll do the same thing to the flap here. So edit, so image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Again, it would have been better if I had done this in order at the beginning, so we wouldn't have to do this to each layer, but it's okay. So 40. 20 and 10. All right. Hit OK. So there we go. Now it's more manila-y color, right? Rather than gray. And honestly, if you turn it in gray, I probably won't care that much. All right. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark this as classified. So the last step we're going to do is we're just going to create another new folder. We'll call this uh, the top secret folder. All right. 
And we'll go ahead and create a, uh, a layer in here for our text and our shape. And we'll go ahead and click on the text tool. Um, choose a color here. We want it probably to be kind of a red color, right? It's usually what it is. Something smart, top secret. And we can type here. I'm going to type top. Loading. Here we go. It's a little bit slow on Photo P. It's got to load all those fonts in. There we go. So top secret. Now that font's like super small, so I'm going to double click on my T here. So that'll highlight all my text, and I'll go ahead and crank the size up here so I can actually see what I'm doing. And again, this font's not really, uh, we want kind of a stencil font, so I'm going to go ahead and click in here and I'm going to find a font. And I'm just going to look for stencil, see if I find something. Stencil, there we go, we got some stencils here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Just a secret there. Oh, okay, I don't like the lowercase. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite those uppercase. And I'm also going to change this. I'm going to change this whole thing here to uh, bold. All right, and get it kind of in there. That should work. And I'm going to go ahead in here on my other on my new layer I created. I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of put a, a box around this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle tool here, rectangle shape tool. And we're going to get the color, make it the same color as the the text there, so I'll just use my color picker to get that. I'm going to go ahead and set the fill to no fill, and then set the stroke I'll Set the stroke to my color, which it didn't grab. So let me go ahead and grab that again. There we go. There we go. So the same color there, and I'm going to go ahead and just draw a box here around my words. And then I'll go up here and just adjust the size till I get it kind of the size that I want it. That looks pretty good. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take these two layers. So I'm going to take my, my box here and hold down the shift key and also take my words. And I'm just going to rotate them a little bit so they're on here a little bit. Okay, like that. Move them around to where I want them to be. And then I'm also going to go ahead and take the opacity on these layers and just turn it down just a little bit so it's a little bit see-through. All right. And there we go there is our envelope. So now we can go ahead and save this uh, or export it as a as a JPEG and turn it in. All right. So good luck. Have some fun. All right.